model steam engines and boilers part 35 drilling and tapping the cylinder block for the studs and turning the front cylinder cover in the lathe once the main video starts you will be watching heavily edited extracts from my series how to build a model steam engine which is a patreon only project the full length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job there are some other benefits of being a patron of my channel you get to download my ebook the essential guide to miniature steam which is completely free and you can watch the entire series of how to build a model steam launch which is over five hours of instructions these video extracts are taken from parts 17 and 18 of how to build a model steam engine which shows me building a Stuart Victoria in great detail. In the last episode, I showed how to drill the steam chest cover and the steam chest, which are then stuck to the top of the cylinder using some Loctite 638. And now it's time to drill through the whole assembly down into the port face. I tightened the chuck more than usual so that the drill in the chuck cannot move. Then I set the depth by just sighting the drill at the front of the assembly so that the drill bit did not go all the way through the port face and according to my calculations now if the tip of the chuck touches the top of the steam chest cover then the depth of hole down into the port face will be exactly where I want it to be once I drill all of the holes through into the port face I lightly clamp the cylinder in my vise and here I'm using a blowtorch to heat the part this will break the seal of the Loctite 638 a word of advice, if you've never done this before, don't get carried away, you do not need to heat the components to red heat. The parts do need to be quite hot, but not that hot. Eventually the bond is destroyed and the parts can be easily separated. Test frequently by tapping the parts with a piece of wood. When all the parts are separated, it's a clean up job. All I'm doing at the moment is getting rid of the Loctite residue on the components. And this doesn't take much doing. I finished it off on a piece of 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper. What I need to do now is enlarge the holes in the steam chest and the steam chest cover, but not in the port face of the cylinder, because the port face will be threaded to take the studs. I'm using a 2.5mm drill, which according to a chart that I looked at is clearance size for 7BA. I drilled the steam chest and the steam chest cover, now it's back to the 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper to remove any burrs from the steam chest cover and the steam chest. These are all the fixings that are supplied with the kit. I'm selecting the steam chest studs and when I try them in place this is what they look like. The steam chest cover fits very well and when I turn it over it fits just as well the other way around. As the part fitted the other way around I can engage smug mode because this is not always the case. As I've explained in many videos, I am not an engineer, I've had no training, I am a keyboard player. And with this job, I can be extra smug, because the steam chest cover even fits upside down. I'm giving the port face a quick deburr, and now comes the scary part. I'm going to tap six 7BA threads in the holes in the port face. I think a few words of advice are needed. When you're using such small taps, they break off very easily. A good general rule is, Two turns clockwise and one turn anti-clockwise, this clears the chips. Here are the two taps that are used for the job. The one on the right hand side is the second tap and the one on the left hand side is the plug tap. You can see the difference. Be very careful with the plug tap though when you get to the bottom of the hole. If you don't stop rotating the tap when it bottoms in the hole, it will break off. Most tap breakages actually occur if you do not back off frequently. If you don't carry out the anti-clockwise rotation to clear the chips and they jam in the work, when you try and get the tap out, it will snap. As more slight burrs are created during the tapping process, remove them in the normal way. This is one of the studs that's supplied with the kit and you notice that it's threaded differently at each end. In this clip I'm screwing one of the studs into place in the port face and the end that isn't threaded quite as much as the other end is the one that gets screwed into the port face. And by doing it this way, what it means is, the studs are all exactly the same length. In this case it wouldn't matter because the holes are exactly the same depth. But holes in components sometimes are not exactly the same depth. So it's a good idea to bear that in mind when fitting studs into your components. 
This method of drilling holes in castings to accept studs seems to work quite well. I think I did forget to mention in the episode where I machined the steam chest cover that initially I left the part a bit thicker than it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be one eighth of an inch. I left my steam chest cover oversized, so what I'm going to do is just machine the top of it, just skim across it. Then when it's finally fitted together, including the gaskets of course, the amount of thread from the stud sticking above the nuts will be just right. I think the next job really needs to be the cylinder covers. Showing on screen at the moment are all the parts that I've machined so far. This part is the front cylinder cover casting, and I'm going to machine that after I've made the end cover. Once I've found the components that I needed for this section of the build, I put all of the parts back in the box and moved it out of the way. Although in this episode I'm going to machine the cylinder end cover, which is made from a piece of standard cast iron bar stock, I thought it would be a good idea to fettle the front cylinder casting first. Fettle, or fettling, is a traditional word for cleaning all the rubbish from a raw casting. As well as a sharp piece sticking out of the side, there's also quite a lot of sand stuck on the shale. But after a few minutes, using my one inch belt sander, the casting now looks like this. The battery's flat. It uses this type of battery, and they don't seem to last very long. But it doesn't matter for this job, I don't need any electricery whatsoever. I just need to set the caliper to the same diameter as the end of the cylinder. As you can see, this piece of cast iron bar is far bigger than the end of the cylinder, which is a good thing. It's better to have too much than too little. Now it's over to the lathe. I've clamped the piece of cast iron in the chuck and I'm facing it. Facing it means to run the cutting tool across the front face of the work to make sure it's square. The good thing about having a large piece of cast iron to make the cover from is that you can hold the piece of bar in the chuck quite securely. This is all very routine turning, what I have to do is make sure that the centre part of this is one inch in diameter. Not an interference fit, but a piston fit in the end of the cylinder. The next part of the job is to use a round nose tool to make a recess between the centre part and the outer part. But it's very important to make sure that you do not take too much off the outer diameter. I could at this stage make a mark on the flange, then later I could mark it out for the hole positions. I left the flange at the end of the cylinder 5 sixteenths of an inch. So if I make the flange on the cover 5 sixteenths of an inch and drill holes exactly in between 5 sixteenths of an inch, which is 5 thirty seconds of an inch, then everything should work out okay. That's the easy part out of the way. Machining the front cover is slightly more difficult because it has to be very accurate. And I'll show how I make that in the next episode. For now though, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.